Hello, and welcome to the next lecture in Joomla Development 101. In this lecture, we're going to discuss plugin files, and in particular, the XML file, which you are using to create your plugin. So, the Joomla plugin file is an XML file which provides details for installation and configuration. As you see as we go through this talk today, we will define fields that are necessary for when we install the plugin, as well as fields which will be used as parameters in the administration panel, which can be updated at any point in time in the future. It's important to note that the XML file must be a valid XML or the plugin will not install. Secondly, plugin XML files. We want to discuss the use of triggers with plugins. Every plugin must be triggered by a specific function call or dispatcher, as we discussed in the intro lecture earlier. The following are a list of standard Joomla content triggers. It's important to keep in mind that custom triggers can be defined and used throughout Joomla or third-party components. So the plugin triggers we're going to look at next are purely used by Joomla content. Every Joomla plugin for content begins with the on content dispatch trigger. Then a series of actions are tacked on to that line. So we have before delete, after, before and after display, before and after save, after title, change state, and prepare. So in essence, the trigger is on content before display or on content change state. Those are how the triggers are defined and used throughout the Joomla content. In the plugin that we're going to create during this lecture series, we are going to take advantage of the before display trigger. So the trigger we will use is on content before display. And you'll see that in the next lecture when we begin to look at the PHP code. So, to get started, we're going to get into the details of the plugin that we want to build. The sample plugin we're going to create for this lecture series is called the Link Protect plugin. And basically, this plugin is going to run on every time a content item is displayed and redirect all external links to a warning page before leaving the website. So this is going to be done by searching and finding all links within a content item, replacing that link with a secondary link which will redirect to a Joomla content item, and then from that point, take them off the website. So let's begin looking at the code that's involved. The first thing that we're going to want to do is going to create the XML file. So I already have opened my IDE with my plugin directory. I'm going to simply create a new file. And I'll save the origin, this new file as link protect.xml. Done. Now, because what we'd like to do at the end of this lecture is to actually install the plugin just to test to make sure the XML file part is working correctly, I'm going to go ahead and create all the necessary files and folders but not put any content in them. So I'm also going to add a folder for helper because we're going to use that in the later series. I'm also going to create a folder for language and again that's going to be an important area that we'll discuss in a future lecture series. We also want to have the main link protect file and then we'll also throw in just a dummy HTML file. It's important to know that in the latest versions of Joomla, the index.html file is not a required file for inclusion in the Joomla extension directory, um, but I leave it here purely for legacy sake. So let's begin by looking at the link protect XML file. The first thing that we're going to need to do is to define the XML version and encoding source that we're going to be using. These are rather standard field types. And I'm going to use the standard UTF-8 for my encoding. The next thing I need to do is to define my extension itself. Every XML file for Joomla plugins, components, and modules will use the same basic setup for the XML files. 
we'll have to define the extension, what version we're supporting, what type of extension, what group, and the group is more specifically used for plugin types, as well as the method for how they should be installed. We use the upgrade method so that when I have a new version of my plugin, I can simply have the user install the new version directly over top of the old version. So next I'm going to define the name for my plugin, and you'll notice that I'm actually using a language string. This is why we're going to define language files in another series, because we want to be able to change this dynamically throughout the plugin from a single location. Some of the fields that I'm creating now are not required fields and can be modified as necessary or left out if desired. I'm going to place in some of the basic fields that are commonly seen, but these are by no means required for every project. You'll notice that some fields will be hyperlinked in the admin panel of the website and it comes in handy so that users can quickly navigate to your site from the admin panel. And we'll add a couple of the content for author email. And then lastly, we'll add one for the version. We'll start at a version 0 or 1.0 and then we'll upgrade with each new release. For the description I'm going to again use a language string which then I can change dynamically from my language file. This is also important if you want to do a multilingual based system. So once we've defined the basic fields the next thing we're going to add into our XML file are the files that we want Joomla to actually install. So we'll set up the files section and then the file name. We'll have an attribute for the name of the plugin. This will tell Joomla what directory to create inside the content group for the plugins. So we'll go linked protect.php and in the file name. And then we'll have a file name for the index.html file. And then lastly, we'll define the helper folder. And you'll notice that I don't have to define all of the files within the helper folder. I can simply define the folder and Joomla will do the rest. Okay, I need to bring these back in one. And I also notice I need to bring in all of them by one space. Once I've defined my files, the next section will be my languages. If you plan to ship your plugin with multiple languages immediately, then here you can define each of those language files. Because I am only going to be including the ENGB version, then I'm simply going to define those versions in my plugin. You'll notice that even though I'm only defining one language, I'm actually going to be using two strings, or two files I should say. The reason why is because before my plugin is actually loaded on the page, there may be a, a reason or a need to have the name of the plugin or the description of the plugin or some other relevant information about my plugin available to Joomla. So if I have a sys .ini file. Any language strings that I define in my sys.ini file will be loaded up regardless of where I am in the administration panel of Joomla. The .ini file will only be loaded up when I'm actively looking at the plugin itself in the admin panel. So once I've defined my languages, the next section is going to be the config. The config section is really powerful and this is where it gets really cool. What we define here are the params that we want to use within our plugin. Now 
the Joomla CMS has a large number of fields that are available. We're not going to use all of them. In fact, we're only going to touch on just a few of them for this plugin. When we get into some of the other areas, such as the module or maybe even the component, we will look at many more of these. But for right now, we're simply going to look at a few of them. And I'll show you a link where you can actually go in the lecture notes to see a full list of all the field types that you can include. The first, field set that I, the first field that I want to include is going to be a name field for the warning page. So this is going to be a parameter where I have to enter a Joomla article. And I'm setting the type to modal article because what I want to do is have a field on the admin panel where the user will click to select the Joomla article. Again, this will make more sense once you see the field. So for now, we're simply going to add the information and then we'll come back and look at how it actually relates at the end. I'm also going to make this a required field and then I'm also going to uh, let you edit it directly from the plugin page, which is a handy new feature of Joomla 3. For the label, I will add another language string and then for the description, I will again add a language string. All of these field types that I'm adding are actually attributes on a single field tag. So you'll notice that I have not ended my field tag until down here on line 33. I'm going to add another field and we'll call this one new window. So here what I want to do is allow the user the option of opening the external link in a new window, new browser window, or in the same window. You'll notice that I'm going to set the type to radio and I'll default it to one. Also, a field attribute can be something such as a class. By setting a class, you can define the CSS and use the bootstrap features of Joomla 3 in the admin panel. So we'll set a label here for this one. New tab, label. And then a description. I'm cheating just a bit by reusing some of that text. And then because this is a radio type, you'll notice that I end my field tag after the description. But I'm not quite done with this field. I'm also going to add in the options. Because it's a radio, I want to give the user the options of zero, which will be jno, and again that's a language string. JNO is actually a Joomla language string, so that one's going to be valid anywhere throughout Joomla. Or one, which will be JS. And then now I'll end my field tag. I'll end my field set. I'll end my field section. End my config. And then lastly, I'll end the extension. So, that should be the extent of everything that I need within an XML file to both install it and to find some params. Now, the part we've all been waiting for. Let's test this and see if it works. So because I have defined these actual language files, I need to go ahead and create them within my language folder. So I'm going to save that as en-gb.plg. And this is actually rather important to make sure that you name them correctly not only so you can find them, but so that Joomla recognizes uh, where they are and how they relate. So I will save the INI, and then I'm also going to create a second one, and we'll save this one as sys.ini. And just so you can fully see exactly what happens, I'm not going to define any language strings right now. We're simply going to package this and install it, and we'll see if it actually works. In addition to the language files, I will also need to define my helper file. And we'll do that the same way that we just did the language files. It's important to know that if we don't create these empty files within the folder, then when we look at the XML file and Joomla goes to install it, it will not install this folder because nothing exists inside it. So once we've done that, 
the next thing that we will want to do is to navigate to the folder. We'll select all the files and we're going to move, make them an archive or a zip file. We're going to rename the zip file. It's not important what you name it. So you can name it anything you like. I'm choosing PLG Link Protect because it's a plugin and because it's link protection. The next thing I want to do is to go to the admin panel of my Joomla website and install this plugin package. If you're not familiar with the Joomla admin panel, you can go to the extension, extension manager, and here you will see several options, uploading a package file, installing from directory, or installing from URL. Additionally, you can use the discover method to install things that are already located on your Joomla website, but are not yet defined in the Joomla database. We will save the discover method for a different lecture. For this lecture, we'll simply look at the upload package file. So I'm going to navigate to the folder and select the zip file which I just created. Opening that and clicking upload and install will show me that the plugin has installed successfully. You'll notice also that I have a language string in the middle of the page. This is because I have not yet defined any of the language files. Next what I'll do is navigate to the plugin manager. In this list I should see one named PLG Content Link Protect and I do right here. Again you'll notice that this is the language string because I have not yet defined my language files. By default the plugin has been installed in the disabled status. Clicking on the PLG link protect I can now see the details of the plugin as well as the description at the bottom and basic options. You'll notice that my basic options give me the article select box as well as the toggle. You'll notice that the toggle has the very nice bootstrap effect. That's because I defined the classes in the XML file when I called BTN group and BTN group yes, no. You'll also notice that the type modal article as defined in the first field gives me the modal article select box with articles from my Joomla directory. And that concludes our first lecture with plugin creation, where we looked specifically at creating the XML file. In the next lecture, we will begin looking at the PHP code necessary for our plugin to begin performing the link replacement that we discussed. I hope you found this lecture to be easy to follow, and I look forward to answering any questions that you may have.